Kia ora. This is James. Welcome to Morning Ramble, June 28th, 2022. Um, today's Tuesday. A little cooler this morning. Um, I think the highs today are going to get to about uh, 79 or something today. So before we start to heat back up again. Um, so kind of nice to <laughs> be out in slightly cooler temperatures. Um, not for the skirmish or faint of heart. I'm not sure what the temperature is at the moment. It's probably in the 60s, but anyway, it's nice. It's pretty crisp. Nice and quiet. Birdies and, and insects. Um, again, I was uh, working on plotting out the um, plans for our power for the property. Um, and wind was on my brain again. Um, it is something I kind of mentioned in that fairly lengthy initial video that we posted up on morning chores just in passing but um as i have also mentioned we're going completely off grid so power is important and you know three sources of power is better than two sources of power is better than one source of power so um looking at wind a little more seriously and the main reason for that is solar is subject to sunlight and therefore it has a limited capacity to generate power throughout the day. Um, the vagaries of weather and all those good things um, also mean that you know even on a on a on a normally sunny day you could get a lot of cloud cover and all those all those kinds of things will stack up to basically um, reduce the amount of power that you're actually putting back into your battery banks. So. Uh, wind is definitely a viable option for where we are. We have a lot of ridges, um, good places to basically stick up turbines and get them going. Um, I'd love to do hydro at some point in the future, but until we've actually got a better water source to actually draw the power from, um, that's probably not going to be an option. Um, and hydro is still, micro hydro at least, is still very, relative, well, very, it's relatively expensive. Um, but then again, it falls into the same uh, camp. Um, so really, ultimately, your power generation for off-grid kind of falls into two categories. Um, three categories, actually. Backup, of course, is, is one of those. Backup is the one that most people think of, which is the generator. You know, stick some gas in the, in the uh, generator, in the Jenny, um, or attach it to propane, fire it up, back up, back up power. And that is a prudent thing to always have on hand. Um, pretty much in any circumstances, um, even even your average home should honestly really probably have one of those, um, especially now with power being a little little weird in the general grid, lots of outages. Um, so yeah, so back back to wind. Um, wind has the advantage if you're in a in a place where there is a reasonable amount of it, and where I'm standing right now in Ohio is definitely not the case <laughs> um, because it's pretty still out here at the moment but certainly where we are in uh, Tennessee um, at a slightly higher elevation you know we have the ability to, to stick one, two, well really as many wind turbines as we can reasonably afford um, and have those up and uh, have them basically adding, adding power to our grid um, and the holiday behind this is um, really to stop here for a second because there's some nice greenery. Um, the idea behind this is really to add to your power generation capacity throughout the entirety of the day. Um, so, for example, if you've got a bunch of solar, I'm just going to use some 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 simple math here. Let's say you have a thousand watts of, of solar, um, and you have roughly four hours of of sun on a on a really good day, um, maybe five or even six. Um, I'll say you basically have five for this this exercise. And um, so you on a, on a good day, your solar is generating five hours at one thousand watts, which is five thousand watts, five kilowatts of power. Okay, that's enough to fill up a five kilowatt battery. Um, which is nice, but of course you, you've got appliances and all kinds of things running 
against that so you're not necessarily going to get the complete advantage of that of that power draw and again it's not entirely reliable because you're going to have odd days where there's cloud cover and, and all that kind of stuff so at on a good day with this example your solar might generate five kilowatt hours okay so what happens with the rest of the day well unless you've got some other source of power generation you're you're pretty much screwed <laughs> um, you could fire up the generator to recharge the batteries if you needed to or to provide some some backup power um, but honestly you're probably better looking at, at at some other alternatives if you have them available um, so wind is reasonably inexpensive turbines are comparatively inexpensive um, and by inexpensive I mean you know you, you can get a rig for a few hundred bucks what might be great um, or you could go you know you could spend thousands of dollars on it so again it comes down to the type of turbines designs uh, whether they'll operate in low wind conditions um, all that all that sort of stuff so you have to go and do do some homework and work that out um, that's something I'm still looking at so don't ask me for any opinions at the moment um, <laughs> re research is well underway though but the bottom line is this let's say that you have one wind turbine and it averages out to 100 watts of generation per hour over roughly a 20 hour period because there'll be some quiet times right so you have some times throughout the day where the wind picks up generates a good chunk of power and times throughout the day where there's not a lot of wind at all it doesn't generate a lot if any but let's say for this exercise, it averages out at 100 watts, just a paltry 100 watts per hour. Over 20 hours, that's 2,000 watts. Um, and this is regardless of whether there's sunshine or pretty much rain. Um, and um, this is additional power that, that you're basically getting off, off your system. Stick two wind turbines in, generating that same capability, and suddenly you have double that. So... You can see where I'm going with this. Um, the idea behind this is to have multiple sources contributing to your off-grid power solution, if you're able to do it. Um, and if you can't do wind and you, you do have a good source for hydro, then that, that should absolutely be factored into, into what you're doing with your, um, with your homestead. Um, yeah. I'm kind of keen on wind. Um, the units that we're looking at putting in for our initial build can be daisy chained out to to six units if we need to. So that, you know the system's highly expandable in time and based on on our ongoing requirements. Um, the biggest limiter that we have. Oh look, bunny rabbit. Let's see if we can catch that. Lots of bunnies out. Bunny season. Um, yeah, where was I? The um, yeah, the, one of the other big limitations of solar, of, of course, is the sheer volume of space that solar panels take up. Um, and we're, you know, going to add those to the ceiling of the house in due in due course. Um, initially, they're probably going to be ground mounts and. You can get higher capacity panels, so you don't need as many, but they cost a lot more. And no, 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 no. It just comes down to dollars and cents and math and all those kinds of good, good things. Um, wind doesn't necessarily have that advantage, uh, that uh, disadvantage. Um, you can just position them here and there, where you're going to get the optimum use of the wind that's actually blowing around to generate power, and uh, pretty much let them go. The other downside, however, with wind is that they are electromechanical so they do have you know bearings and stuff like that that, that do wear out they do require maintenance um, if you get yourself a good unit and you look after it care for it um, you know you, you'll get years out of it um, but when you're sizing up your off-grid solution um, dollars and cents wise the other thing to consider is you know how often are these components going to be replaced um, Solar panels, 25 years, 30 years, who knows. Um, look after those, and as long as no you know, bad accidents happen to them, trees fall on them and stuff like that, then you're pretty much good. These days, um, battery technology, uh, I wouldn't even look at uh, lithium-ion 
honestly. Um, too much chance for things exploding and catching fire. But LifePo uh, lithium ferrous phosphate batteries are now readily available. Well, supply chains, but largely readily available. A um, little heavier, but um, much more stable. And you know, a good a good battery will will go seven thousand plus cycles before it starts uh, diminishing in capacity. And seven thousand cycles is well. For the average person is is 20 years or more so <laughs> again um, your, your batteries will probably out outlive you generally um, your solar panels will probably outlive you all your controllers and controller units are all you know rated for long periods of life um, five year plus warranties again look after them keep them in a good good place they'll last a decade or more um, doesn't it doesn't mean that newer technologies won't come along and replace these uh, much like these technologies have pretty much started to supersede lithium-ion. Um, and the same thing with, with wind technologies, it's still improving. People are looking at ways of generating power that, um, that are efficient um, and provide you with options. Um, so yeah, wind is definitely on our radar um, and the way that our system is designed um, it's relatively straightforward to be able to take one unit, one wind turbine and easily put that into the system. It's just another form of uh, input. Um, or alternatively, we could take multiple wind turbines and combine them together um, and then funnel that input through. Or we could expand our inverters and you know use one for solar and one for wind only or, or whatever. It's, it's pretty... It's pretty modular. It's a bit like Lego for solar, or Lego for off-grid power in many ways. Um, there's still wiring and cabling and you need fuses and things need to be done properly to make sure you don't, you know, electrocute yourself and stuff is properly grounded. But the bottom line here is you, you have plenty of options. Um, so thought of the day, I kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, if you have, the opportunity to provide yourself with with backup solutions um, and they're not expensive and they're easy to implement then you you really should look at those um, even if you can't afford it right out of the gate at least consider it think about it and make plans for it um, and then implement it when you have the ability and, and capability to do that um, more is better than less Preparedness is important, um, and even if you never end up using it, um, at least you you have a degree of um, safety, like a safety net. You, you never really want to use it, <laughs> ideally. You don't want to fall off the rung and have to use it, but if it ever happens, you'll be glad that you had it sitting there. So yeah, um, something to, uh, to consider. When we get more into our designs, um, and we're not reinventing the wheel here. Uh, lots of people have done done this successfully, so we're not we're not basically um, going to be doing anything particularly stupid or outrageous. Standing on the shoulders of giants, as I have mentioned earlier. Um, but uh, as we as we progress more, I'll I'll start doing some dedicated and hopefully a little more professional videos on um, how we're actually putting this together and assembling it what the outputs are and what our plans and designs are to actually implement this. And then as we go and proceed in time, we'll see whether those plans come to fruition or whether they evolve or whether it just proves to be a dead end or not. Anyway, a little longer morning ramble this morning. Um, I have fed the ducks. I'm going to go and take the dog for a walk and um, just going to get a breakfast and then I'm going to have a nice hot cup of coffee and get into the workday. Kia ora everyone, take care, be well.